In a world where it often feels like every word and action is recorded and saved for later, where anything we say can be held against us after even a decade or more, learning to edit yourself, to remove the influence of others, to remain authentic to yourself so that you are only saying, sharing, offering what feels most aligned to who you are and who you want to be is of utmost importance. Now, more than ever. And we need to learn how to do it on the fly. It can feel like a superhuman feat, but it's possible with a lot of mindfulness, a dose of agility, and some practice. Welcome to Being Boss, a podcast for creatives, business owners, and entrepreneurs who want to take control of their work and live life on their own terms. I'm your host, Emily Thompson. And today I'm joined by two boss friends of mine, Tara Street and Tasha Harrison, to talk about editing your words, your brand, your offering, and why you need to embrace the ever-evolving nature of growing as a human and as a business. I first met Tara several years ago when I took my first trip with Kathleen, my previous co-host here at Being Boss. Tara is Kathleen's sister, and you've heard from her a number of times here on the podcast in episodes 56, 109, and 175. Tara co-founded Brig Creative with Kathleen, where they develop brand positioning, messaging, and design for those seeking a brand platform that fits their true vision. Watching Tara work is a treat. She has a way of getting in there with what creatives really want to be doing, what they want to be known for, and I knew this conversation was squarely in her wheelhouse. It's also a pleasure to finally introduce the Being Boss listenership at large to Tasha. Though anyone who's been to our vacations or are a member of the Being Boss community, you're no stranger to this romance and erotica author and freelance editor. Tasha came into our sphere years ago at one of our vacations and has become a friend of mine. And not only is she an author and editor, she's a crystal lover and has been writing about crystals for me over at Almanac Supply Co. for over a year. But today it's her experience as a no bullshit editor that brings her to the table to lend her expertise in this realm of stripping away what's not needed and just saying what needs to be said. But before we dive in, let's talk about Tasha and her crystals real quick, because it's her embracing of the tools that help her connect with her intuition, tarot and crystals that I believe makes her great at what she does. She is in sync. <laughs> and not the band, but synced up with her intuition. And using this connection to create and write makes her great at what she does. And it's for that reason that not only is Tasha being introduced to you here today as we talk about editing, but that she's also a boss expert joining me on the virtual stage at the Guided by Intuition Gathering, a virtual Being Boss event taking place on October 8th, 9th, and 10th. We'll be going live with a whole band of bosses who are gathering for a multi-day event of keynotes, panels, workshops, and live podcast recordings with a good bit more woo than our traditional events, because I believe that pursuing business endeavors that leave us feeling aligned and fulfilled begins with a strong connection to your intuition, that wise little voice inside that nudges you in the right direction. My friend Kelly Knight, owner of Modern Mystic Shop in Atlanta and co-author of Spells for the Modern Mystic, will be joining as my guest co-host as we invite a group of boss experts, Tasha included, to help us connect with the wisdom of our intuition, embrace the tools that enable that communication with a focus on using tarot, crystals, and astrology, how to use those tools to set aligned goals and take the right actions so that you can feel good about the steps you are taking in your life and especially in your business. In fact, Tasha here will be doing a breakout session on working with crystals for creativity and prosperity. For years, Being Boss has been known for its ability to bridge the gap between the woo and the practical, but I have never taken you as far into the woo as I am with this event. And if it's a bit too much woo for you, don't fret. I'm not done with getting down and dirty with the woo-free side of business. But for this event, and during a month that I've always very much so focused on magic, I'm embracing the woo and inviting you along for the ride. If you'd like to learn more and snag your ticket to this virtual event that will leave you more connected to the wisdom within yourself, more so than you've ever been, go to beingboss.club slash gathering. I do hope you'll join us. And before we dive into this conversation on editing, 
Here's a word from our sponsor. Our friends at FreshBooks know that you are busy and a boss is always looking to optimize and better manage your time. A business tool that includes things like easy use automations to help you spend less time invoicing, expensing, and tracking projects, FreshBooks is there to help you save some time for doing the creative work that you find most fulfilling. FreshBooks is packed with features to help you manage your always valuable time. Send automatic late payment reminders on invoices, create recurring invoices, and if you want to get fancy, use subscriptions for hands-off billing. It's ridiculously easy to set up and use. Join FreshBooks today and get 50% off your first three months. Just go to freshbooks.com slash being boss and enter being boss in the how did you hear about us section. Welcome, Tasha and Tara. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Hi, thank you. I am super excited about this chat because I feel like we know how to have fun conversations. <laughs> and I think of this based on several times that we've been able to be together, my favorite of which is Post Yacht in Miami. Yes. Right? Our first gathering. I think like both of you are getting kind of starry eyed just even <laughs> thinking about it. That's like original Those crew are good right there. Yeah, Big Little Mermaid right? sing along. Little Mermaid sing along. Miami's never been the same since. Yeah, right. It hasn't. Let's just think about what it was like to hang out together within six feet. <laughs> A dream. The good old A days. Dream. <laughs> <laughs> so I've invited you both to come chat with me about um, about editing for a couple of reasons. One, I feel like this topic came up a couple of times during the conference a couple of months ago, this idea of like when it comes to being authentic, either in a personal brand or in a business brand, like where do you draw that line? What parts of yourself are you sharing or not sharing? Um, What does it look like to show up authentically when you are editing yourself? Like, how does that work? So Tara, you work with brands, you are a brand expert. Uh, So I think you have really great expertise to lend to this. Tasha, you literally are an editor. Yes. (laughs) Your job is in editing. So I think both of you can lend um, great expertise to this from two different sides of it. Um, So let's talk about what this looks like. Because in the last episode of the podcast, um, I talked with a friend of mine about owning and sharing your story. But today I want to focus on the editing piece of it. It's not sharing all of your story. It's about sharing the most relevant or impactful or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like I guess relevant, relevant was the word, um, pieces of your story or of your offering or of your words. Um, so what does it mean to edit and why is it important? And Tasha, why don't we start with you? Well, obviously everyone needs an editor. You and I need an editor. Editors need editors. Because I think a lot of times when you're writing something, what you think you're saying might not be what you're actually saying. And an editor can help you hone the idea, sharpen it, and, you know, make sure you get your point across. I think of what happens a lot now, especially now during COVID times, (laughs) but like everyone is like doing all these courses and getting all these templates and doing all these things. And I think a lot of people are just starting to sound the same. And uh, like it's even an exercise just to be able to find your voice. Like I know like Tara does that whole thing with the brain. Right. Right. Concept like to get you to find your voice because a lot of people are just looking at what other people are doing and then rewriting or forcing their personality or authenticity into that particular framework. And I think an editor helps you with that, especially like if you're just giving them exercises to talk about like, what is this thing that you're trying to say? And then you can go through and line through and figure out how to make their voice come through. Because that's what you're really looking for is the authentic voice of the person. Not even necessarily how they talk about their product or um, their offering, just their voice. Like you're going to, you're your first customer, right? Like you're going to always sell to yourself first. So why would you want to sell to a bunch of people that you don't even know how to talk to? Mm. Mm. I love what you're talking about here is like removing the influence. Mm -hmm. 
right? It's about like getting, like stripping away all the influence and really getting down to the core. I like that. Tara? Well, and I would say that it's so true even with the flip side of that. So a lot of times when I'm working with a creative entrepreneur or a a wellness entrepreneur on their articulating their brand message, like in an instant, that first impression, which of course has to be edited down because it's boiled down, right? right? Um, A lot of times they get the most hung up on how do I describe what I do first? Like that's the stumbling block for them versus getting their authentic voice in it. So a lot of times we'll tackle, well, if we're working together, I have the luxury as the writer on the team listening to how they speak. So even though they're describing, oh, I'm a nutrition coach or I'm a life coach who focuses on money coaching or I'm a, right. They're describing the offering. And what I think I'm going to do is hold these retreats, but maybe do an offering, but I can't decide if I want to do one-on-one or right. So I can hear how they talk and help them get their voice into it. But if they're doing it themselves, a lot of times they get so hung up on, am I explaining this right? Am I even a coach? Am I, what am I even doing? <laughs> Will even, anyone even understand how to hire me? They get so hung up on that that I feel like that's where you probably maybe should start is figuring out how to just explain that a little bit minus that influence of how everyone else does yeah. it as simply as you can and then kind of circle back in and pepper in the, the authentic voice. But to Tasha's point, that's where it can also, then you run into the trap of it. Like, I'm adding some exclamation points and I'm saying, hey, y'all, oh, or I'm saying, you know, what, <laughs> rock on or whatever. Yeah, just whatever you're trying using, to do to pepper it in. Yeah. It just, oh, you know? I feel like a lot of people are using language that is not <laughs> native to them in their <laughs> copy because it's something that is appealing to, like, I don't know. I'm talking specifically about AABE, like African American vernacular. Like I see it a lot. Like a lot mm-hmm. of people, hey girl, da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, can you not do that? Like, do you talk like that in person? Number one. Right. Like if you're not using that language, like in your everyday conversation, why do you feel the need to do that in your copy? And I think that it's become like this cutesy thing to do and everyone's doing it. And it's kind of, it's influence, right? Yes. You're doing yes. it based on influence. Um, and I think to to Tara's point about like offerings and those sorts of things and how it is that you you edit in terms of listening to people talk about them, their business and you sort of pulling things in is what you're doing is you are listening to people just sort of idea vomit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Like you're just right. hearing the vomit and you're able to pick up, I think not only the words, because they've seen you work. It's not only the words, but it's the things that they're getting excited about. Mm-hmm. So again, whenever they're speaking, they're just vomiting. And I think we can all like, who hasn't vomited on social media lately? <laughs> like We're all doing those things. Right. But it's like listening in and, and, and noting the, your actions and reactions, whatever you're saying, specific things that really allows you to uh, pick up on the energies of the things that matter most. So, and I've even, I've had people do this to me and I think you're right, Tasha, where you can't edit yourself. Uh -uh. Like you have too many things going on. I mean, all the greatest writers in the world, they all have editors. Like everyone needs an editor in one form or another. And I even think about like my own masterminding with people when I'm idea vomiting, just having all the ideas and letting things go, people will go, you know, whenever you talk about that one thing that you feel like you should be doing, your face looks like this <laughs> or whatever. But whenever you talk about that other thing that is new or weird, or maybe it is something that someone else is doing, but you want to do it a little bit differently or whatever it may be, you light up, you get excited, you talk more quickly, you like talk more animatedly, whatever it may be. It's not just about, um, I think editing is not just about like stripping away the influence or, you know, or whatever. It's also making a hardcore note of the things that where the places where passion lies. 
<laughs> How about that? Right. And you know what's funny is I think that the idea of stripping away the influence of others can be also really intimidating. Like, mm-hmm. I don't have a single original idea. Like, do I sound mm. like this person? Do I sound, am I just saying that? You know, I'm thinking less about how maybe you share on social media and your the little sayings that you're picking up. And I'm thinking more like, how do I describe I'm a different kind of coach than someone else? How do I describe that I'm a different kind of uh, writer than someone else or speaker? And I'm, I would say that some, some things you can't. <laughs> like, yeah. I think sometimes people try so hard to sound like they're creating this whole new business or model or lifestyle experience that they skip over the words that people understand what they mean <laughs> straight to all the inspiring, light up, passionate, truly me words. And that can be hard too. Like sometimes you've just got to have, go back to like the simplest label of what it is you do and not worry so much about being distinctive or original, like you being yourself, which is the hardest thing to do in that really simple explanatory framework is how you will sound different than the other person who's doing the same thing. Because guess what? Someone is doing the same thing you're doing. Because there are no original ideas. Right. (laughs) So you can't be too freaked out to be original or you won't do anything. And I think that a lot of people on social media get caught up in this, like, I'm special thing. And yes, we're all special. We're all special. (laughs) We're all special. (laughs) But when it comes to business and, like, conveying your intent behind anything, using those trigger words or, like, signposts for people who are looking for your specific that's why seo exists i mean right right (laughs) they know they know what words are going to encourage someone to click on you or whatever but also what i found um fascinating about how you said that like when you're talking to people about their businesses and how they light up and all that i was just thinking about how even how someone talks and hearing that like hearing the cadence of their speech can also make that more authentic to them because I mean, yeah, we all have accents and all that, but I think the like the rhythm of someone's speech and how they convey their ideas makes a big difference in how you would write copy or write product descriptions or whatever. Absolutely. A lot of times when I'm writing copy, uh, product descriptions for someone or offering descriptions, we always kind of start off with the simplest. Here's what I do. Here's who it's for. Um, my approach kind of feels like this and here's why I really care about this and you should care about it too. Like we get more heightened right. at the end of that, what do you ever want to call it? Introductory layer. And, but getting more heightened or lit up or sparkly is different for different people depending on your personality. We've had clients who are like, I just want to be uh, rebellious in my brand. Like I'm like a rebel. And I'm like, that's awesome. But the whole time you've been visiting with us, you're actually just really sweet and very <laughs> reassuring. And you've been guiding us through how you help your clients in this really kind, unassuming, calming way. So we're not going to all of a sudden like slap some rebel language in there. You're a rebel in that there's not a lot of people in your industry who do this the way you're doing it. So let's heighten that aspect like it's going to be okay no big deal like let's heighten that aspect of your voice because i do think you do have to heighten a little right like yeah. i think that's a lot of times where people get a trap with social it's like texting you know like if i text my sister kathleen okay it's like oh my god why is there a period <laughs> why is she pissed <laughs> off <laughs> right like you have to be like okay cool exclamation <laughs> right or else you sound mad yeah. So I do think there's a bit of that, to, in fairness to everyone out there who's kind of really trying to sparkle and emote and be special and picking up phrases from places maybe they shouldn't be, to just have more personality because you almost have to exaggerate yeah. on stage. And it's like just like texting or else you sound like flat, and, right? So I think that's tricky. I don't even know the answer to that. I, I feel like we naturally do it for our clients and their branding. Whatever it is about them that we're feeling or seeing, we just heighten it a little. But that doesn't mean it's the same mountaintop for them as it is for someone else who yeah. actually is really rebellious or really spiritual or, uh, you know, all the ways that they can really heighten their personality. It's just different for everyone. I feel like what 
I almost I feel like we're processizing this, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> because what I hear is there is this requirement of stripping away all of the influence, right? And getting down to this core, like, who are you if no one's ever taught you anything? <laughs> Maybe not that, or like influence you, or you never picked up that saying or that coaching model or like whatever it is that like has culminated into what you are now. Like if you were to strip away all of the influence, there is like that authentic core. And then the process of editing, I think, is re-layering those influences in the most intentional way possible, right? It's very mindfully coming in and going, okay, that has not served me. I don't know where I got that. Let's throw that away. Um, but let's instead pull back in this other thing. This, again, that book you read that time that changed your mind and, you know, they're now your favorite author or whatever, or the coaching model that you've invested in becoming certified in. And that's how it is that you want to help people in the world or whatever it may be. You can pull back in these pieces of influence. And I feel like when it comes to being a creative business owner, like that's what editing is. That's what like creating a brand, a voice for yourself is. It's about stripping away all the bullshit, getting down to the core, and then relayering things on very mindfully. I think that's just what editing is, period. Like, that's why I like being an editor. I'm one of those people who does not like to draft. I hate the act of writing a book because it never feels like I'm doing it right. Every time I do it, it feels like you know nothing what are words. Wait, says the person who's written how many books? Eight. Okay, so yeah, that's I want everyone who's like, most. I don't know if I can write to <laughs> no, no, note no, no, that no, Tasha's no, no. This saying is a this. falsehood. This is a lie. Right? Right, I get it, but like faulty feelings all day, even from Tasha. (laughs) Yeah, like I love the process of like, you know, the plotting and planning, like the beginning parts, like getting to know the character and plotting out the story, the writing the story, eh. and then going back in and revising, because like you said, like that's where you get to come in and layer things in, you get to add more things, because now that you have the framework, you can see where you need to add a little bit more description or a little bit more um, feelings or whatever. So like, I, I totally get that part. That's, that's the whole reason why I want to be at, I still do that with like published books. Like I will see people's books and I'm be like, hmm, well, you could have done this a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> like if, anyone ever, ever if anyone ever got a hold of my Kindle to see all the notes I make to myself, I would be in trouble. That is That's how funny. I am about movie trailers. That's my fantasy <sighs> um, alternate job has always been to be the editor of movie trailers. And uh, and I remember just seeing, I remember when the Sex and the City movie came out. Like, and I remember seeing the trailer for it and I was like, that was a missed opportunity. If I was editing that trailer, <laughs> I would have done, you know, I would have, you know, I was thinking of what I would have done. Wait, so what would you do? And maybe not necessarily <laughs> sex sense, but like what are what are people missing whenever because that's like that's a perfect example of this. So you have a movie. So let's say maybe you have if we can pair this to like you have an offering and you need to create some marketing material around it, which is the movie trailer. Like what are the hit the hits and misses? Right, right, right. Um well, I feel like with movies, I feel like actually they do a pretty good job because you can use, you know, music and pacing. And I think there's a little teaser element at the beginning and then, you know, some some little nods to the fans in the middle. And like, you know, they can use music and pacing to do a lot. Most trailers are great. And then the movies are awful. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. But the struggle with editing your words, whether they're written for your homepage of your website or you're introducing yourself at a networking event. Well, I hate that word, but you know what I mean? Like, or you're introducing yourself in a podcast. I think the trick with that is um, you can't, you want to convey that emotion and that passion and all the things you are, which actually movie trailers are pretty good at. But uh, as a person, you can't, you just can't lay it on everyone thick all at one time. You got to just sort of be real, like casually, conversationally. Here's what I do. Here's who it's for. You know what I mean? People have to discover that the next layer and the next layer with you as they ask to learn more, yes. I would say. So that didn't really play along with turning the movie. For a minute, I got excited. Like, how can we turn the movie trailer <laughs> exercise into our next braid branding exercise? But we do have one that's similar. That's like, if you had to write your own how-to book, which mm-hmm. I feel like is a really useful one that we have. So if you're, if you want to do it, like a do it yourself, I think 
if I had to write, not Tasha, because then she's like, oh, God, I got to write another book. But like, <laughs> let's say you're um, a nutritionist or whatever, and you had to write a how-to book. You couldn't be there in person. You couldn't introduce it yourself to your dream client, just teaching them what you're going to do for them if they hired you. What would the title be? That title can usually be a little bit more soulful and inspiring and personality fuel. But then like, you know, food that heals, right? But then the subhead needs to actually explain what, you know, what is this book going to You know how you always see like a really cool title of a book? And you're like, what? What does that mean? And then you read the subhead. Oh, it's how to. It's like the Bean uh, Boss book. Right. It's just like the explanation for like the ordinary explanation that your mom would understand. <laughs> and then do you like your first, like your five chapters? What are the chapters and what am I going to learn in each chapter? And honest to goodness, if you do this, I feel like you will tap into the personality side of what you're doing and the actual expertise of what you're doing. Um, and then you just turn that into that. You can just turn that into, in many ways, that first impression introduction to people um, in your brand. It's a really neat exercise unless you're actually writing a book. The whole point of that is to trick yourself into that you're not describing yourself and your brand. But if you're actually writing a book, it can be very daunting because yes. then it's not tricking you to do anything. You're actually doing the thing. Y'all want another title of mine? Yes. yes. The first draft of everything is shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> the first draft is shit. Just yeah. get comfortable with it. And then what's your sub? Like, what's the description under that? How oh, to... I don't really have a subheading. <laughs> to very say what you mean, title. Yes, how I don't think. I mean, it's it. right there. Not how to get over it. How, how to you get it. edit it to gold? <laughs> Some shit oh, like that. But like, <laughs> it's like the first draft is already thinking shit, and this is how you make it not shit. I don't know. <laughs> let's let's talk about this a second. Even as Tara was talking, I was thinking about thinking about this. And this is one of the things I definitely learned writing my book. It's also something I've learned working with copywriters um, or even with people who aren't copywriters who are writing copy for, uh, for their websites. And that is this idea that not every word you write or not every offer you create, not every marketing plan you plan, whatever, like none of those are your children. <laughs> Right. It doesn't matter how long you spend on it. It can be made better and you should probably cut out half of it <laughs> from the start immediately. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, that's like my number one pet peeve about like fiction writers, especially. It's just like, this is my baby. It's not your baby. It's a product. <laughs> Unless you're pimping your baby. Let's not call this a baby. <laughs> Okay, because right. now you need to get it out there to make money for you. I'm going to show you how to make this into something sellable. This is not a baby. I'm going to cut it. Are you okay with this? I'm going to cut it. <laughs> like, I think too, a, a lot of times when people start thinking, and this goes into like pairing the authenticity about like your personality with your words, they just get so married to what's already on the page. And mm -hmm. like they get in their own way with the process of like making it better because they're so married to, oh, I've already done this. And I think this is exactly what I wanted to say. And be like, no, no, it's not. And then there's like that back and forth, you know, trying to get them to figure out like, yes, this is a really beautiful sentence. This is this is one thing that I have to do with people all the time. It's like it's not that I hate this sentence or I hate this passage. This is all beautifully written, but you don't need it. It's not doing anything. It does, it's not serving a function. It's not moving the plot forward. It's not teaching us anything new about the character. So it has to go. And then they get angry. If you run a small business, you have to try Gusto Payroll. Deposit paychecks and file payroll taxes automatically. Plus get employee health insurance, onboarding, expert HR, and more. You'll even get three months free when you go to gusto.com slash being boss. That's gusto.com slash being boss. Okay, I want to talk about this angry piece because I've been seeing this a whole lot lately. So in the community, in the being boss community, we have like full spectrum of bosses. We have people who are just side hustling or like still working their day job, like really just starting all the way up until we just recently launched the C-suite, which has um, 
a handful of bosses in it who are all like six figures and up. Um, and so I do the Monday meetups with the community. I'm having weekly C-suite calls with these like next level bosses. And one of the things that where I see the most clear divide between baby bosses, and I call them baby bosses because they call themselves baby, they, they coined that phrase for themselves, between baby bosses and these next level bosses is exactly what you're talking about. It's the ability to take something that they've created, see the actual like value of it, um, and not like not like your words are invaluable or anything like that, but see if it will serve you in this space, in your business, in this manuscript, in this offering, it, like whatever it may be. It's about seeing the value of it in this place and being able to just release it if it is not serving you. And that like mindset, that mindset is one of the, is one of those telltale signs that you are either like going to make it quickly or you still have some hardcore work to do. Right. I mean, I can, when we work with baby bosses and then, you know, seasoned bosses, often transitioning into the next phase of whatever it is they want to do, whether that's being a speaker now or an author or scaling up or narrowing in, right? And I would say with the baby bosses, how that shows up in their brand copy is they're trying to over explain it, they're trying to over prove it. Mm -hmm. Or they're over apologizing for it to cut, you know, like this may not, you know, like they're just, there's so many emotions wrapped this up. There's no weird. shortage of, right. Or I'm no. sorry. That's a right. <laughs> <laughs> or let me tell you about my 12 step process to, you know, no boo, make it five. Right. Yeah. And then, even then like the season bosses, let's make it three. And if anything, the, the bosses who are transitioning into what's next for them, if anything, I have to help them hang on to something. They want to like shut, burn it all, right? Like, I don't want to say that anymore. I don't want to say this anymore. I'm not even calling myself that anymore. I don't even offer this anymore. And I'm like, well, okay. I am this feeling. Slow down. I am this feeling right Slow now. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> this you is... know what? This, this, this piece, I'm like the, the opposite editor. This piece can, don't take it for granted. Just because you're tired of it or you burn think it. it's done or you think it's not serving you anymore. Are you, is that really true? Like I would, be, I feel like I keep like playing devil's advocate, but like, I would say, let's, let's explore what this new phase of your business is going to be and how you're going to describe yourself and brand yourself from here on out. You know what? Guess what? Let's circle back around and pick up that gem that you left behind because that's not like, that's consistency. So sometimes there's pieces that you shed that you need to, you have to shed to be able to edit this new brand for yourself. And then you go back and pick them back up because they give, they're part of the DNA of how people already recognize you or know about you or understand who you are. So don't, don't burn it all down, you know? Um, but with the baby bosses, yeah, like let's, let's I mean, it's, a little more it's the same way with newbie writers. They always over explain. And like, did, you already told us this two chapters ago. Why do we need to keep doing this? I'm like, well, I want to make sure the reader, I'm like, is your reader dumb? Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like just assume that your reader has graduated high school and leave it at that. Like, they're reading a book, they've gotten this far, they can they can hold on to that information. You don't need to keep repeating it. And then the over explaining, just like overwriting, lots of overwriting. I think that lots of baby bosses are the same way. I was like, my services yeah, page used to be too. like, you had to scroll twice to get through my services page. I'm like, why do I? I will never forget. I don't know who said it to me. It was another boss. And they were like, why do you have so many services? I was like, well, I wanted to offer. And like, mm -mm. And then she was like, well, how many people do you work with that you actually like working with? I'm like, not many. Just like, so cut out all the services you don't like to do. Because guess what? People will still try to hire you for them. And then you can decide then if you want to do that. Yes. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. what I learned? People just don't care. Like, <laughs> <That's right>. I... <laughs> I deactivated my services page in April. People are still contacting me. I'm like, my books are closed, guys. But, yeah. you know, I'm definitely in the, I, me personally, I'm in that transition of like burning everything down. Like, I want to do something different. Do it, different. but then we're going to come back and save some stuff. <laughs> right. Because there's good I think stuff you, in there. I think you made a great point there, Tara, where editing is not just about knowing what to cut out. It's knowing what to keep. Mm. Right. And again, I think that's like, again, understanding that like core of authenticity, like what is at the center of it 
and not burning those things down. Because also, I'm a burner. <laughs> also, <laughs> just burn all the things down. Torch it. Right? <laughs> and sort of, I don't watch the show, but it makes me imagine what, like, love it or list it. Like, love it or list it. <laughs> Yes, I feel like I would always. Don't they always it. end up loving it though? That's not always end up happening. I have never seen one. I've probably seen two of these I think shows. That people Do they ever list it? Yeah, rarely. Rarely. Don't they usually? Lo- Isn't it really just a home renovation show where you think they're going to sell it? Maybe I should try to get on Love It or List It. <laughs> right, that's an interesting thing. Maybe it is in the one. That's also a great example of how properly editing something can mm-hmm. make you love it. Uh. I mean, that happens more than not with us, yes. with clients who think they're going to change their, change something really drastic. Um, and then it's like, let's just work on it. Let's just edit it. Let's just update it. Let's refresh it. Let's get this new energy into it. And, and more often than not, it's a love it or li- than love it more than listed situation. I would say, I, I don't know if that same would be true with Tasha. Um, she's like, I'm, I'm, bur- Tasha's I'm still here it. doing the work. <laughs> As much as she wants to crap about it, she's still doing it. I mean, I still do it. I still do it. I hate this. I don't want to do this anymore. Okay, give me, give me, just send it, send it to me. Right. You know what I mean? And the whole process of business is consistently reiterating, right? It's about a constant edit. Like you will never do it and it be done. Literally. Ever. Why? Why can't it be? Exactly. Done? That's what Please. I was about to say. Why can't we be because, done? Because technology moves too fast. That part. <sighs> right? And and like and the economy right now is in a hundred percent flux constantly. All these things. Like I think right now more than ever, we're all faced with this fact that if we want to be business people, we have to be consistently iterating and willing to try new things. And <laughs> okay. Only. Thanks, right? Emily. We have to be agile. <laughs> we'll keep sense. going. Flexible. <laughs> Flexible, <laughs> agile. And, and editing, like constantly editing. I even think, you know, at Almanac, we're doing some, we're doing some constant editing and like faster now than ever before, like just fixing things, editing our product lines, changing the way we're doing things, just like keep going. And I think if, I absolutely know that if I hadn't been a business owner and done the things that I've done for as long as I have, that process of fast editing would be painful. Like I probably would have stopped the first edit of like, Ugh, I worked so hard on this. I don't want to let it go. Right. But like, oh, yeah. I don't get time for that. I do not have time to be precious about literally anything. I, I mean, the more really you can like sink into that. Anything. That's my problem. Like I'm ready to throw it away all the time. Right. Same. Move on. <laughs> Mm. There's new and better stuff out there. So, yeah, I would have made it fine. It probably would have been a rougher go if mm-hmm. I hadn't if I hadn't had all that experience, like took the time to build. But yeah, if I could have burned it down five years ago, <laughs> right? I'm I'm still always willing to burn it down <laughs> any day, any any reason good enough, and I'm like, sure, why not? Why not? Next thing, always next thing. My twelve year old okay. likes to remind me that. He's ba- you're basically a whole new human every seven years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like all your, is that yeah, like, like all your all cells your and skin and everything is, and so he's, like it. he keeps telling me just wait he's so 14. wise. He's 12 now. 14, I'll be a whole new person. <laughs> and I feel like business owners are like that a little bit, you know? Yeah, for sure. But, but you're not a whole new person. I mean, you're not, <laughs> there's still a lot of. You know, there's still you're, a lot still there. I think you evolve. Like you're an evolution. This before. Like yeah. you said that, you know, people's ideas remain the same, like your core moral beliefs or whatever don't change, They're, but they do change. They just evolve. Mm-hmm. Like I find myself, I, I, I've always been a city girl, but I found myself daydreaming about moving to this house that my husband showed me in Beaufort, South Carolina. That has like it's near the beach and you can walk like with my little I see myself walking with my little red wagon and my crab traps and putting <laughs> the crab traps out in the morning and then doing oh, Emily's man. thing, like walking around my property in the morning. With yeah, surveying the kingdom. Surveying my kingdom. Mm-hmm. I can't grow anything, but I'm thinking about like I want to move to Beaufort, South Carolina and grow okra. Oh, <gasps> so is that. this something that happens? I don't know, but I think as humans we do, we change, but I think we soften more, I think. And that's what makes us a little bit different as we get older. But we do change. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I think that comes through in how, circling back to how you might 
introduce yourself or talk about what you do. I don't think there's such an urgency or need to force it. Mm-hmm. And that in itself, you become a better editor on the fly of yourself and your words and your choices with time, right? Very true. You just kind of essential it down. I will say too, and on the subject of like how you introduce yourself, I feel like again, maybe this is like a baby boss thing. And I think it's important for you to know how to talk about what you do 100%. But I never introduce myself the same way twice. Like I edit what I'm going to say based on who I'm talking to okay, every true. single time, every single time. And so it's a, it's a constant editing of self and you just get into this, you start understanding that, you know, an elevator pitch that worked last month is probably not going to work this month, especially these days, as quickly as things are changing. Right. And so I've just adopted this idea that I don't need an elevator pitch. Like I'll have a different elevator pitch every day edited based on who it is that I'm talking to. And again, I think that like flexibility, like built in agileness, um, around even something as simple as how it is that you talk about yourself as another, just, uh, I guess, evolution of being a business owner, of being an entrepreneur, of showing up and trying to explain to people what it is that you do, even that changes for some of us every day. I think, Emily, though, you have a natural kind of fearless quality when you walk into even unknown situations where, you know, just that grace under pressure where you're just going to, you can wing it. Make right. It up. Sometimes I just make it up. I'm just kidding. Make, make it up. up. What if I did? <laughs> and for grit. some of us, yeah, that's natural, baby boss or not. And some of us, that takes time. Um, if I was, you know, 24 years old and just went from my side hustle to my day job, Ooh. making it my day job, like my mm-hmm. whole life, and I had to go in and introduce myself, uh, I'd probably be pretty flustered. And I'd have to figure out, you know, I'd be reading the room and is if I wing it, is this going to fit? But I totally know what you're talking about. Like adapting that elevator pitch or your positioning statement, as we call it, to reading the room. And it doesn't mean you're being fake or flighty or kind of trying to fit other people's expectations. It's more just taking your expertise and you know what you have to offer and just saying it in a way that makes sense for the people around you. It takes practice. It takes practice. I don't think that changing how you pitch even is fitting in the room. It's just speaking in a language that you think everyone in the room would understand. Well, yes. exactly. So, and I think that like what you were saying about Emily being fearless, I think that's just like really Southern grit. Like I, I've met a lot of Southern women here and they are just kind of like, even if they're not feeling like it, they'll come in the room and there's like, hey, y'all. <laughs> you know, like turn it on, and I'm like, you just turn it on, yeah. And and like, I that's one thing that I wish I could do more easily. But and, and maybe as I get older, maybe the southern grit will rub off on me. I don't know. I've just right. got like, I've just got grit, not southern grit. It's just, it's I just grit. feel like it's New Jersey. I feel like Tasha, <laughs> you definitely have like a. You've seen me walk into rooms with bosses. Whenever I'm walking in a room with people I don't know, I'm like mean mugging everyone. <laughs> like, oh, that's me. No- <laughs> <laughs> Right. I am definitely like active bitch face <laughs> the whole way. Yeah. So and even then, I guess like in a room of bosses one way, in a room of people that I don't know, like just Aries face all the way is what happens. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So no, I think but the thing that I do want to come around to though is, you know, a lot of people do. I think you again should know how it is that you t- introduce yourself to people, how it is that you talk about what you do, but it'll change. It has to, it goes through constant iteration, iterating, um, constantly editing, um, constantly shifting. And I think the more you can like come to terms with that and accept that that is part of the process of the entrepreneurial journey, um, the easier it is to embrace all of the changes that have to take place along the way. I do want to hit on, um, on how it is, like how and where you draw the line in terms of what it is that you do need to say, and maybe this is writing a book, or maybe this is on your sales page, or maybe this is what you're sharing on social media, whatever it may be, what it is that you, that needs to be said, and what it is that you just don't need to be saying. (laughs) 
love to hear if either of you have any thoughts or uh, maybe even like tools or practices for people to figure that out for themselves. Like, how do you edit yourself in those places? Well, I can speak to it on um, like in the sales page services, Mm -hmm. like how Tasha was saying she's listing a lot of services. When you think about like, where do I draw the line between listing everything I can do versus what I should do versus what I want to do? I like to think of it like, okay, if you had that premier offer, like the way you would love to be hired, like imagine, don't worry about imagining your ideal client. Imagine the ideal way you would like to be hired and what that ideal even price point is and how long does it take and what are the things that you're doing? Almost like a package. I guess give like a photographer, for example, who, or, um, a lot of times we work with people who are selling a service. So they're less tangible. So you're an accountant. Do you want to be just doing people's taxes or do you want to be like meeting with them every quarter and signing on for a whole year and advising them and having these set and there's a set price, right? And this, this level of expertise that you're bringing to it and this engagement versus I can do your taxes. I can help you get your QuickBooks set up. I can help you right? this laundry list of services. And I would put that front and center. Like that's the thing you get hired for. That's how you, if you're contacting me to see what's a fit, this is what I'm known for. This is where you're going to get the best out of our engagement together. And then you can, like we were saying earlier, decide based on the person or the conversation or what bill you need to pay. <laughs> yeah, I'll just do your taxes. <laughs> yeah, I'll just set you up in QuickBooks or send me over your shoebox of receipts. If you, if you don't feel like you can get that premier engagement, but keep trying and you can keep tweaking and editing. But I would say that's a really important place to, you know, we've been talking a lot about that first introduction positioning statement. I think a really great place to edit yourself is on your offering. And then the other stuff can still be smaller underneath. Sometimes I call it also's and others. Like I'm known for doing year long engagements, guiding my clients to their financial health and well-being. Yes, I can also, in smaller bullets, help you set up your QuickBooks, blah, 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 or follow me up. You know, I would really think of it like a hierarchy like that. And that's kind of where I draw the line. Don't give everything equal weight. Lead with your best offering. And then the other stuff can just be tucked underneath. Yeah, I like it. Focus. Find some focus. You can do lots of things, but find some focus. Tasha, any nuggets? I mean, ditto. But also, I think a lot of times, so I'm always like thinking about the individual person, like, do you know yourself? Mm-hmm. Like, how well do you know yourself? And how well do you know, like you said, like what your ideal client is, how you would like to work every day or, you know, what you want to be known for. And that that goes for, you know, authors or any type of entrepreneur. So like uh, the way that I do it, I get journal all the time. Like I do like after action reports on everything I fucking do. I keep track of everything. I have a million notebooks. This house is going to burn down from notebooks. <laughs> Especially when you burn it down. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I have, I have them in bins so I can carry them out easily. Okay, good. But, um, <laughs> you know, like I, I, I spend a lot of time, I, I call it navel gazing, but I think it's kind of necessary to like learn your process and learn how you work best. And then it's easier for you to be able to tell people, this is what I I excel at. Yes, I can do all those other things, those and also's, but this is what I excel at. This is my zone of genius. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to lead with that. And then if you have additional, people have additional questions, you can always add to it. So that's what I try to do lately. And then, I mean, like in the last four years lately, just always just, this is what I excel at. Yes, I can do those other things as well. What about when it comes to writing something like a book or even earlier? Well, I guess you sort of answered this in terms of assume that people at least have a high school Mm -hmm. uh, diploma. Um, But whenever it comes to writing book or even, you know, what it is that you're sharing, especially as a brand on social media or those sorts of things, what are your recommendations in editing those? Like, where is the line between like, personal and relatable and personal and private um or what I mean, belongs I'm in your brand or not always like leaning far to the 
<laughs> left of private. Like just stay. I keep all of my personal business pretty much out of my brand. Like things that I'm passionate about is easy to share about like social issues or that sort of thing. Those things are are easy, but you're rarely going to hear me talk about my kids or my husband because that's not your business. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of, there are a lot of businesses that are based on sharing that whole person like that. And that's great. Actually, I actually like consuming that content. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like where people are sharing everything. I'm like, this is great. I get to sit here and drink wine with her on Friday night. We do this every Friday night. Is that okay? <laughs> you know I agree. I mean? It's yes. You're a taker, not a giver when it comes to people's personal. Absolutely. Me too. I'm sitting there. Reading along, and I love it, but I don't necessarily share it either. (laughs) Right? So, okay, then I feel like something is coming up here because what this also equates to is that everyone gets to define that for themselves and then also potentially edit it as they go along, right? So I have I had a coach once who always talked about your guardrail. Like it's like bumping up against your guardrail and to like find out where it is, where that line is. Stay away from the guardrail. Well, in, that's your warning we're, we're to not go over imagining cliff. that we're driving at night and you can't see it <laughs> you could go over a cliff okay. okay you're still safe on this side of it <laughs> as long as you don't go over it right maybe that's not the best metaphor in the world <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> there's gonna be some damage if you go up against right or we can just tow the line how about that there you go you're just, just gonna tow the line um and then you can pull it closer like if you if you're not liking what comes from it, either inside or outside, um, or push it further if you find yourself able to share more or talk about the thing more or whatever it may be. Um, but it is about just defining it mm-hmm. first and then editing as you go. And then also whatever that mix is for you, whether or not your personal life comes into your professional life, you're still a person at work. And so if people are going to work with you or hire you, they're going to be working with you, the person, right. or reading about you, the person. So whatever you're sharing on social or on your website or in your, all your first impression brand places, it should feel like people are getting a peek into what the experience of being with you is going to be like, right? I just don't know how useful it is to show your personal life because they're not going to be with you involved in mm. that. You see what I'm saying? Like, I guess it depends if like you're a lifestyle brand or something. Like if you if your okay. client is aspiring to be more like you, or you're maybe like three or four steps ahead of the baby boss that's hiring you to help them do, or edit through their book or whatever, maybe sharing more about you. I think, you know, like you said, people like to follow along, get to know you. But I know I'm like you, Tasha. It's harder for me to share that stuff. And mm-hmm. I will even sort of bring this sort of down a level. So maybe it's not talking about like talking about your kids or what you ate for dinner for last night, but simply in ha- like the words that you use to describe the thing or how it is that you say, hey, girl, <laughs> or whatever it may be. It's even like editing just like that level of like, what are the words that they are reading? Like, how are you talking about the thing that you do? Um, All of the like that level of editing yeah like strip out the jargon yeah if you don't use jargon strip yes. out generic words if you don't use generic words if you don't over emote emote a little <laughs> don't try to sound academic or corporate if you're not academic oh or my corporate. gosh yes. please don't yes and right? like if like uh, i see a lot of times because there is a stage of writing or getting to know or learning how to write your voice like to write from your authenticity a lot of it involves mimicking what other people are doing but you have to keep doing it you know what i mean like i think a lot of people will get like get the bare bones like oh here's a modality i can download it for 27 dollars. i'm just gonna plug in all of my stuff and i'm gonna leave it just like that and they don't ever go back in to like fine tune or yeah you know just get it closer to who they are you know what i mean and i think like there's absolutely nothing wrong with mimicking right i agree and sometimes that's the only way that you'll be able to get going like you need to be able to see that someone else did it kind of copy what they did to make it feel like something that you are doing and then just put it out there and then over time just refine it and refine it and add it and add it until it's your authentic voice 
But I think a lot of people are just stopping at like, oh, I'm going to write like so-and-so. My copy should sound like this. And then just leaving it there, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes. A hundred percent yes. Agreed. It's all, I think, it's all a work in progress, right? Your positioning, your branding, your business, your offerings, your voice, your literally all the things. It's all a work in progress. And you can't always be working on it. You no. got to do your work for your clients or whatever else, other thing, right? You can't always be working on it. But, you know, for different people, I think people always ask me, like, how often should I revisit my brand? And it's just different for everyone. Uh, it could be every year. It could be every four years, five years, 10 years, you know, and a lot of times what forces you to re-look at your language or how you're speaking or what you look like online or how you're sharing is something else forces you to do it, you know, where you know that you don't like the work you've been doing or you don't like the kind of clients you've been getting or you've only gotten word of mouth work up till now. You've never had to really be intentional about it, but now you need to step it up. Because yeah. the word of mouth is, or you're, you know, you're ready to scale, whatever that looks like. I'm um, usually it forces you to do it because none right. of us like to go back and do it. Yeah. Right. No, even then though, I still think it should be something that people are doing a little more proactively on an ongoing basis. And maybe it is once a year because even whenever we're doing website stuff or I'm doing website stuff in house, like I have a recurring task every year for literally every word on our website to be revisited. Because I think you're right too, is that, you know, often it is an outside force that forces you to relook yeah. at your voice, your positioning, all of these things. And I, if you're more proactive about it, it's not those moments that make you do it. Like it's not a reaction to something outside of yourself is that you have proactively made sure that you're working with the right clients because your sales page is talking about what you do, the way you most feel like working with people now, or, you know, your voice on social media is really aligning you with the right people. Um, because this thing has happened in the world and you want to make sure that you are, you know, aligned, like whatever it may be. I think the more you are proactive about those things, um, the less reactive you ever have to be. I do revisit once a year, Mm -hmm. but also like I have to, I'm going to check my privilege here. (laughs) Like I am a person who is pretty self-aware and I think a lot of people aren't really self-aware because they will muscle through parts of their business and feel uncomfortable in it and not really understand why they feel that way until the shift that you said terror mm-hmm. comes. Mm-hmm. And then you have to, they have to sit back and do like all of this really big, heavy lifting to get to reposition themselves in a way that they want to be seen and hired because I do so much journaling and navel gazing. Like it's not that hard for me to be like, you know what? I want to shift my focus from editing so much this year and more towards writing and, you know, promoting books and stuff like that. It's not that hard for me. Cause well, I only have three things I talk about. So like, I always just kind of like, oh, I'm feeling more like doing this this quarter. Let me shift the focus and fine tune my content in a way that it will focus on these things. And not only do you have the awareness and have built that muscle, like Emily does as well, you guys exercise that muscle a lot, both of you. Um, I do it a lot for my clients, but not for my own business. Mm. Does that make sense? So I'm exercising that editing, that awareness muscle, the editing, the fine tuning, but I'm doing it for other people. So I think that both of you are really good at doing it for yourselves. And Tasha, you have the talent. And so does Emily to actually implement it. So not only the awareness I want to shift, but then I can actually write about that or redesign our sales page or completely reposition ourselves online. Like you guys both have the skill set to also implement on the strategy that you want to follow for yourself this year. And so a lot of people don't have that. That's true ability to do it for themselves and even people who do like me I can do it for ourselves at braid oh like it's like pulling teeth to get me to work on our own brand like someone else has to yeah that's right (laughs) someone else has to force me to do it and then I will because I really I, I love doing it for our clients like I just get in the zone because it's so much easier to edit coming back everyone needs an editor it's so much easier stepping into someone else's world listening to their words seeing this mess of ideas and seeing what needs to be at the top of the page, what needs to be the headline, what needs to be the call to action, where the personality can sneak in. It's so much easier when it's someone else because you're not sitting there constantly questioning with every line of copy, this business model decision that this line of copy 
holds for you with just so much weight. And so it's easier to do it for someone else than yourself. And I feel like a lot of people probably feel that way. Um, oh, yeah. It's definitely get... easier for me to point out to what's wrong with other people's books than it is for <laughs> all the, day. Hence, hence my Kindle notes. <laughs> it's so much easier <laughs> you know, like to see that problem. And, and I will have the same problem in my own manuscript and go back and forth and back and forth about it. And then I might be editing someone else's alongside mine and be like, oh, oh my God, this is the same issue I'm having. And then like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, I get it. Like you can see it more clearly. But I think too, like that, that comes just from working with it all the time. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, like you said, there are lots of people out there like you, Tara, just like set it and forget it. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, <laughs> Let's do it one fucking time and be done. <laughs> like, but it's never yes. done. I know. Why? <laughs> right. Like and I will say too, like Tara, you have business partners and like a whole team that can help like check the you, house. edit, implement all of those things. Tasha, you have your tools, your journaling, you're like probably having conversations with other people yeah. about it, like a reflection sort of things with other people. Same for me, but like hardcore journaling, lots of conversations about my business with other people. Um, and all of those things act as sort of editing partners, basically people who are going to reflect back to you, give you suggestions, tell you where you get excited and where you're not getting excited, um, help you see what's not working, what is working. And I think I think those things are really important to the process because constant work in progress, always editing. Right. Thank you both so much for coming and chat with me about this. I knew that you two, I knew that you two were the two that I wanted to talk to about this because, because this is, this is important stuff and it's stuff that comes up in conversation a lot, but it's also conversations that I've had with the two of you. Um, as well. So thanks for coming to share this with us here. Can both of you tell us um, where people can find more about you? Tasha, you can go first. Um, you can find everything you need to know about me at TashaLHarrison.com. I am on Twitter as at Tasha L. Harrison and also on Instagram at Tasha L. Harrison. But I'm trying to get away from social media. You can blame Emily for that. Yeah, you can totally blame me all day long for that. I like it. <laughs> Tara? Um, you can find out about Braid Creative, where I work and help brand up entrepreneurs and baby bosses and senior bosses alike at braidcreative.com. So it's B-R-A-I-D, like a hair braid, dot com. And Tara, you can go first for this one. What makes you feel most boss? Oh my goodness. Well, you guys know what makes me feel most lost. My shed. Yeah, I'm your looking shed. at her my, in it right now. I'm in my shed. I love I'm it. forever jealous of your shed. Same. And I it makes my little sense. shed in the backyard, in the garden. Sometimes people will use the contact us form on our website, which is just to be about inquiring about working together or, you know, that kind of thing, which is fine. And they'll be like, do you have a schematic for your shed? What are the dimensions? <laughs> Kathleen's like, you don't have to answer this. I'm like, well, actually, I don't have a schematic, but um, I love being able to come back here and work and just have space. And it's really cool. And if anyone's considering it, I highly recommend it, especially now. And so many of us are yeah, trapped I mean, at like, home. You have that, that I can step away option. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to work and take your work to the shed. It is nice. I know I'm not telling anyone anything they don't already know. It's sort of a little fantasy. And I don't usually indulge in them, but this was one that was, uh, that makes me feel boss when I get to come back here and, and then meet with anyone from anywhere. Mm -hmm. I love it. Tasha, what about you? What makes me feel most boss? I think it changes from day to day, week to week. Constantly editing. Yes. <laughs> Constantly <laughs> editing. <laughs> Um, and it's just, it's more like, you know, just finding gratitude in small things, like always finding the joy or whatever. And like, I'm, my writing is making me feel most boss right now. I feel like I am writing things for people and for myself that are things that I love to talk about. I'm writing in the genre I love to write in. It just feels, I feel way more settled into this career than I ever did before like before I just felt kind of frantic and like I was always trying to figure out how to do something now I'm just kind of like I'm content I could do oh. this forever 
Well, this you know, <laughs> and that makes me feel so good. You guys, it is like a work in progress, but definitely feeling that doesn't mean that you're not going to hit a level of contentness with comfort. You don't always have to be scaring the crap out of yourself with everything you're doing. Like sometimes you can just feel content in what you know how to do best. Yeah. And that's even if you still have to keep working on it. Content. <laughs> I mean, well, mm. yeah. It's- as a writer, you should always be learning and changing. As an entrepreneur, you should be doing the same thing. You should be an eternal student. You shouldn't be sitting back saying, I've got it all figured out. I don't have to change anything. Right, and then, that's, the, that's the day it ends. Th- then your business stops. <laughs> yeah. Either your business or your soul. One of the two. <laughs> right. right. Either or. And. Or you could just go start trapping crabs out. Yeah. Take your little red wagon. Growing okra. Listen, y'all. I kind of mm. want to do it. I've been talking about it every day since he told me this. <laughs> I'm there for it. I'm there for it. Well, thank you so much for coming and chat with me. I super appreciate it. I'll see you guys in Miami soon. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Right? Everyone's like, no. no. Okay, never mind. Later. New Later. Orleans. Little mermaid. <laughs> New Orleans, sure. We'll do New Orleans. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's New Orleans. Mm. I could have conversations with Tasha and Tara literally all day. Actually, I feel that way about a lot of bosses. And you should know that conversations like these are always sparked between bosses when we get together, which is why I created the Being Boss Community, a place for creatives, business owners, and entrepreneurs to gather and talk shop. From showing up live in our Monday meetups and answering prompts around our monthly themes, to having a space where you can go ask questions or lend assistance from your own experience. If you find this episode inspiring, then you'll love the community. You can find out more at beingboss.club slash community. Now, until next time, do the work, be boss. Yeah.